Welcome back to the rocket stove water heater build. I have it all hooked up now, well, temporarily hooked up to the loop under the floor. I got 300 feet of PEX tubing under the floor in this greenhouse, and I have it hooked up through a pump running through the rocket stove water heater through that stainless steel coil. And in this video, we'll take some readings so you can see how it's performing. This is how I have it set up. I have that same uh, stove pipe that I had rigged up for the other rocket stove just running right out through the window. There's not much of a slope on there, it's almost just level, but it is working like that. It'll work a lot better once I get a real chimney put up. But for this testing right now that I'm doing, it is working. This is the rocket stove water heater, all set up, ready to go. Piping. So you can see that I got it hooked up and circulating down in that loop under the ground here, under the floor. There's 300 feet of PEX tubing looped around under the floor in this greenhouse. And then I got it coming back out. And I just got it into a bucket right now. Let me go around here so you can see the flow. That's the flow that this pump here is putting out. It's just like, I don't know, a gallon a minute or two gallons a minute. It's not that much. And this is a thermometer I'll be using for testing the water loop temperature. Right now I got the probe just in the bucket and it's about 52 degrees. That's the temperature of the loop under the floor right now. And when I test the outcoming hot water, I'll be just testing it right here. This isn't the best thing, but I'll be testing it right at this little spot right here. And I'll well, ask you one about 53. I tried using that infrared thermometer on this tubing here, but I just couldn't get an accurate reading. Even if I spread some black stovepipe sealant on there, I don't. I think there's just not enough surface area to get a good reading. So I'll just be using this thermometer here. It's pretty accurate. I used it in other experiments. So I'll fire this up and get it going. The fire has been going just a couple minutes right now. It's been circulating around there. It's starting to warm up. The temperature of the loop now is well, it's about 59 degrees. And... I'll take the probe and touch it onto this outgoing hot water and we'll see what we get. So it's about a hundred and it's over a hundred degrees right now. Hundred and three. And it's still climbing. Hundred and five. And the loop temperature. Uh, and the loop temperature is about 61. So we're getting a little over 40 degree temperature difference. I'll come back in a little bit and I'll do some more testing. The stove is still easy to touch. Now we're getting that familiar high temp burn. Wow, that's pretty hot there. I'm just shining it. That's pretty doggone hot. And if we look up here, we can see the gases and fire through that secondary air burn tubing. Right now I have it off so I will turn that on to the open position. I'm not sure if that makes any difference or not yet but so it's on right now. I don't know if that made any difference. Um this is in Fahrenheit, so it's getting way up there in temperature. So I'm gonna, 
it's getting a lot of air. I'll put it back down a little bit. I'm just going to pull the secondary air right out of here so we can see what's going on. That's in the secondary air tube. You know, I, I don't know exactly what it's doing. It'll probably take a while to see if this is improving it or not. I'm sure a little bit. You know, the air has got to be coming in because smoke isn't coming out. So it's got to be drawing air in. But I do see flames right in that uh, burn, secondary burn chamber. That's This is just right below the riser. It's about inch and three quarter space all around the top of the stove where the secondary air tube goes in. So I can see flames in there. So that's what's going on in there. The stove top is still pretty cool. You know, 178. Let's see, you get the stove pipe, 180, 76. So we are extracting a lot of heat out of the fire, and we're dropping it down that much out the exhaust. I'll do another quick test on the water. Let's see, I'm going to try to set this back up here again for a little bit, I think. It wasn't extremely hot. That was just the other thermometer beeping off. So, test the probe in the water. And the return loop right now is 72 degrees. And... The outgoing hot water is 110, 12, 13, 113, 14 degrees. And this stove has probably been running, by, I think, less than 10 minutes. And we'll come back a little bit and take some more readings. Well, I noticed as soon as I... As soon as I get the fire going and it starts warming up, I start getting leaks on these stainless steel fittings. I don't understand. I think it's got to be just expanding differently in some parts because they weren't leaking when it was running cold, but they are now. And this side, you know, there's one leak here. But this isn't going to be the permanent setup over here. It's just a few minutes later, and I'm a, I'll check the fire temp again. You can see it's way up there, you know, over 1900 degrees in spots. Bubble, well, still pretty hot on the fingers. This does get a little bit hot to touch. And then I'll go check some of the stove temps. This is a stove body. I think it's been running 15, 20 minutes now. Stove body, I do have the secondary air open. And that's getting pretty warm. This is the face of the door. Door frame getting up there. Top of the stove is around 200 degrees. The exhaust temp getting close to 200 degrees. This drops it drops down pretty quickly. So we're extracting about almost all the heat we can out of that fire. And we'll check the water temp again too. Let me set this down. I had to put a fire brick on there, top of the stove for this meter, just because I don't want it to melt. 200 degree top, I don't want it to melt. And I'll test the return line. And we got, uh, it's about 83 degrees on the return line. And the outgoing temp, get a reading there, 
is 134 degrees. Rising up a little bit. I'll check the temp down in the return line again. And it's still 84 degrees. I'm not quite sure how accurate that temp is right there. Because when I I can't really touch this. It's it's too hot for me to touch this. It feels like it's probably over 160 degrees this pipe. I can feel a big difference in the tubing, that's for sure. And there's your flow. I think there still might be a little air in that loop. Once in a while I get some bubbles coming out. Otherwise it's running pretty quietly. Little drip there. Drips here. <laughs> I know I'm going to have to take that apart and put some other pipe dope on there. Get them sealed up. Pull this out again. See what's going on in there. That's a secondary air burn. I see lots of flames. So it's performing pretty good, I think. That's starting to get hot to the touch. I think I am. That's getting pretty hot to the touch too. I think I'm gonna have to put some spring handles on here or something because this is hot. This handle does does get pretty hot. We'll just open the door here and check the fire. Whoa! Whoa! That's that's too hot there. I guess I have to check it through the exhaust. Or I guess I have to check it through the air intake, not the exhaust. Let's see what we got. Oh, he smokes. That's over 2,100 degrees there. That one. Look at that. Holy cow, that is hot. The exhaust temps are getting pretty low. It's almost too low right now to get it out. The piping and it is starting to condense. You can see drops forming on this joint. You know, this isn't hot. You know, I don't know if this is 100 degrees right here. So we're getting some condensation dripping. But I'll get an insulated chimney put in, you know, for the final installation, and that should keep the exhaust temps warmer so we won't get that condensation. Well, that's some readings I'm getting on this rocket boiler stove. It's working pretty darn good, I think. I mean, it's really dropping the temperature down out of that fire and putting it into the water. It's almost, you know, too, dropping it down too much. I might even be able to get by with less tubing inside this uh, boiler stove, less of that corrugated stainless steel tubing, because when I'm getting that condensation further down the exhaust tube, that's almost dropping it too much. And if I took some piping out of there, that might keep it up a little bit higher. Of course, it'll work better too if I get a real chimney, insulated chimney, it won't uh, drop it down anymore after it gets to the um, flue pipes if they're insulated. And a few things that I probably will change. I probably have to put some uh, spring handles on that door to operate the primary air and just that door handle because they, they get too hot to touch. Other than that, I'm pretty satisfied with the way this is working. I mean, it's, it's pretty doggone efficient, I think. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on another video.